Hello, and in this video, I'm going to be largely following chapter 8 of the SPSS Survival Manual version 7 that was released in April or July 2020. And I'm going to be showing you how you can manipulate your data in Jamovi. So, this is particularly useful if you've got some data and you've downloaded it from an online survey tool and you then want to get it into a format you can run analysis on. I do have another video similar to this, but using SPSS if you prefer. So in this particular example, we are looking at the, the life orientation task, which is basically a questionnaire that measures how optimistic you are. And we have six uh, questions and I'm using the survey.sab data file. I've cut down the variables to make it easier to manage but essentially it's exactly the same and you'll find a link of where you can download the data in the um, description of this video. So we've got six um, questions uh, all about life orientation and if you want to see what the questions look like, they look like this. So you can see it's on a one to five scale. So um, if you strongly agree with the statement, you give it a five. If you strongly disagree with it, you give it a one. And what you can see is there's three questions which are scored the opposite way around to the other questions. So often when you're uh, using a validated questionnaire or you've created your own questionnaire, you will want to put in items that are um, scored differently in order to check the participant is paying attention. So the easiest way to see this is if, I give, if we compare question number one and question number two. So you can see that question number one is, in uncertain times, I usually expect the best. And you can see that if someone was to score that very highly, they'd be a very positive person, so they'd be an optimist. And question number two is, if something can go wrong for me, it will do. So you can see that if someone was to score that very highly, they'd usually be a pessimist. So what you want to do is you want to um, reverse score all the negatively scored items in order to just check that you can then use it to create kind of total scores and do various things like that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to show you how to reverse score the items to start with. So um, there are two ways of doing this. There's one way where you can use menus to do it. But I personally, yeah, if you've got a small database, just like to select the items you want to reverse code, holding control or shift if you've got items together. And if you're on a Mac, you hold command. So select the items which are um, two, two, four, and five. And what you then want to do is go onto here, like so, and then go on to transform. You can see that it's uh, got the items that we selected here. You want to come down here and you want to choose a create new transformation. You want to give it a new name which is going to be called um, Rev2 just for the sake of arguments. And then we want to go here and we want to say 6 take away the source variable. Now bear in mind that this is on a 1 to 5 scale, you might be wondering why 6. The, the reason is, if I just show you this manually using an Excel spreadsheet, that if you want to reverse score the items, you want to change their, someone's original score into the reverse scores. So for example, someone who scored a 1 on a reverse scored item, would want you would want to give them a 5, someone who scored a 2, you'd want to give them a four, and someone who scored a three, you'd give them a three, a four would give them a two, and five would give them a one. And you can see that if you add these two together, you get six. So that's why we've chosen six. So the, the way to work out what number you need to take it away from is always, you look at the maximum possible score they can get, you add one, and then you take away the original score. So in our case, what we're doing in Jamovi is we're going for six as it's a score of one to five. We're taking away the original score and that will allow us to reverse score as needed. You can now see that we've got reverse score items like so. And then what I'm going to do 
is I'm just going to go here and I'm just going to relabel them. becomes five. Okay, so we've got these scores here. So what we then want to do is go here like so, and we want to use the new compute variable option. And we want to go here, and we want to go for, um, call it total. So you can actually reverse score stuff as well using this technique, but I just find it easier to just select the variables. Um, so if you go here like so, and we want to go for sum, so you can see sum is there, so we can click on that, and then we want to go and move in the variables of interest. So one, comma, that would be two, uh, that would be three, That would be four. That would be five. And that would be six. If you notice, whenever you select the variable, it does tell you how you're meant to sum it or how you're meant to kind of put it together. And there's lots of really powerful options here, so that can be really useful. So if I hit enter, you can see that we get a total score for OP. Okay, let's say that you wanted a mean, you can do roughly the same. So, uh, new computed variable, call it mean OP. And then come here like so, and then we want to go and find mean, which is it. And obviously you could just type in the word mean if you'd prefer, but I just thought I'd show you manually how to do it because it's often easier. So like before, you never have the reverse score items and the um, original items in. So if you've done reverse score, you always replace the original item with the reverse score. Okay, and that's the mean. So you can see that we've now got a mean score. So that's quite useful. Let's say that you want to do a medium split, which is often quite uh, a useful thing to do. You can just go here and let's do some analysis. So medium split is say where you divide uh, the groups into say uh, young and old based on 50% of the scores being younger, 50% of the scores being older. So to do that, what you would do is the following. You do recessor frequencies. So we need to find out in this case age, what the difference is. And if you come over here, you can see that 50% of the scores, roughly, are younger than 36. So we could say 35, let's go 35. And 50% of the scores are, are, are older than 35. So the way we would do this is we would go and do a new transform variable. So new transform variable. Uh, let's call it age group. Source variable is going to be age. Using transformation, create new transformation. And then we want to um, go here and then add in recode condition. And we want to say if if source code is, and we could say uh, less than or equal to, and let's say um, 35. Um, Sorry, let's say 35, use one, um, and then we could say if source code is greater than or equal to 36, use two. And then what you can see is we've got a number of ones and twos here, so that's quite useful. We could copy and paste this like so. And then we could, for example, relabel this as young 
and old. And that way it will show young and old if that's something that would be of use to you. So you can see how you can kind of convert uh, continuous variables into categorical variables using that technique. The other thing that might be quite useful is if you've got what's known as string data. So that's when you've got uh, letters and numbers. It's sometimes quite useful to be able to con convert those into numbers as well. Um, so what we want to do is go copy like so. Go and change this to uh, integer, which means numbers. Go and paste. And you can see that that automatically converts that into labels as well, meaning that you're no longer dealing with, with text data, which can be quite useful. So that means you can do more powerful techniques than that. So another thing you might want to do is go and filter your data. So if you only want to say analyze males or only analyze females, you can do this quite easily. Um, so if you come down here and click on the filter icon here, and then if you want to um, go and find your variable of interest, so let's go and find the variable of gender and say equals equals one and click enter. And then what you can see is it's only it's selected only females. Likewise, if we change that to a two, it will select only males. And then you can see it filtering like so. So that can be quite useful. If you want to delete the filter, you can just go here. You just go here and then delete. Okay, so that's how you can deal with filters. So I've shown you how to you can recode continuous variables into categorical variables. Um, I have shown you how you can um, create mean scores, create total scores, and how to reverse score. So that should be all you need to do in terms of doing your pre-processing in Jamovi. But if you've got any questions, you can email me on c.tipton at newman.ac.uk. Thank you very much.